not it's not telling you what happens to the green section. Um, it's just a snapshot of how many there are right now at that age. Um, okay, there's a rule called the competitive exclusion, exclusion principle. It says that two species cannot occupy the same niche. A niche is an organism's way of life. For example, what it eats, where it lives, when it hunts, all that kind of stuff. If you have two species that have the exact same niche, one will outcompete the other, and the other one will basically be extinct in that area. And that's what they're showing here in this picture. You have two mice with the exact same niche. This one will die. This one will survive. Eventually, they'll only be the, the blue mouse. Um, on the flip side, if their niches are not exactly the same, or they maybe um, end up in slightly different niches, they could survive. Sometimes this is called resource partitioning. So if you look at this picture on the right, we see these birds. The yellow birds originally sort of, they could eat from anywhere in the trees. The red birds come in, and what we notice over time is that the red birds end up in this area, and the yellow birds end up here and here. And this kind of goes hand in hand with like natural selection. If you had two species of birds, and they had ranges in the size of their beaks, where they could eat bigger or smaller insects, for example. Um, maybe if there was no competition, there wouldn't be any selection for beak size and their beaks would stay an average size. But look at situation three here. Now you've got two species competing. Maybe the red ones are better at catching the big insects that live on the, on the trunk of the tree. So big beaks are selected for and over time uh, through natural selection. Um, they switch from, from this range of beaks to having mostly larger ones, and they live in this niche, and the yellow ones end up with smaller beaks and end up in this niche, and so they both can survive. So that's um, resource partitioning, and again, the rule is that two species cannot occupy the same niche. This picture of birds is not breaking the rule because they are not occupying the same niche. Trophic levels are the levels um, in a... Uh, kind of reminds you of, of food chains and food webs. Just keep in mind a couple of things. The producers are your plants, your autotrophs. They get energy from the sun. That is our ultimate energy source is the sun. Um, the energy is then passed from the plants to the primary consumers who eat them, the herbivores. They had sometimes written like this, primary, secondary, tertiary. There can also be quaternary. And then the decomposers are sort of what break everything down. Again, just a reminder that energy cannot be recycled. Energy flows through an ecosystem, starting with the sun, and a majority of energy, what it ends up being used for is metabolism. Its final form being heat. Matter is cycled through ecosystems. Those decomposers can recycle the carbon and the oxygen and the nitrogen and the phosphorus, and those things can go back into the ecosystem again. So again, here's another picture of it. The producers in an, a land ecosystem, the producers are your plants. In a aquatic ecosystem, they may be plankton, like phytoplankton, plant-like plankton, um, and those are your levels. Productivity is a measure of what the ecosystem is producing through photosynthesis, because remember, that's, that's the first step in our, um, in a, uh, or the first level in the trophic levels. Net productivity is what's left over to be passed on to the next generation. So in other words, the net is the gross minus whatever those organisms themselves use for cell respiration. And an important note about that is that in general, there's a rule called the 10% rule, which you'll have to be able to use on the test. It basically says that only 10% of energy is passed on to the next level in uh, one of those food pyramid, trophic level pyramids. The rest is being used by the organism, is ending up as heat, being used for metabolism. So it's called the 10% rule. Um, and I'm not gonna work these questions at the bottom, but I'm gonna show you these at the top real quick. So if a producer has a primary productivity of 10,000 joules, how much would the primary consumer have available? So our producers at the bottom here, our primary consumer is the next one in the line. Literally all you have to do is divide by 10. So there would be a thousand for the primary consumer. And the next question asks about the tertiary consumer. That's level three. So if the primary had a thousand, the secondary would have a hundred, and the tertiary would have 10. Uh, and that would be kilojoules. So just so you know how, uh, how to solve one of those, you literally just divide by 10 to get the next level. And the next set of questions are about the productivity, um, but I'm not gonna work that right now. 
here's another food pyramid showing you those levels. Um, this is again showing a food chain and a food web. A web shows lots of organisms interacting. A chain is just like one set. A keystone species is a species that plays a really big role in an environment. So if you read something and they talk about a species that if that species gets wiped out, you know, maybe they tell you that the crow is a keystone species and say, what might happen if the crow got wiped out? Then you could assume that it's very likely this ecosystem would collapse. Maybe there would be too many of some of these down here and that would eat up all the herbivores and, and destroy the ecosystem, something like that. But just know that that's what a keystone species is. And it's not necessarily the one at the top or the bottom. It could be any species that's crucial to the survival of the ecosystem. Again, energy flows through an ecosystem. Chemicals get recycled. And then this last little thing here about bioaccumulation. So understand that if a toxin gets in the land or the water, like DDT in the 70s, it's not the organism that's directly exposed to it that's going to be worst affected. Because what happens is the toxin, there's little bits of toxin in the water. So everything they drink or eat, they get a little bit of toxin. But since these fish eat them, they get all the toxin that's accumulated. And the bigger fish eat the little fish, so they get everything that's accumulated. And by the time we get to the top consumer, in the 70s, this is what happened with eagles. They could, when they, they had so much DDT in their system that when they laid eggs, the, uh, the shell would harden. And when they'd go to sit on them in the nest, they would crush. So these uh, like heavy metals like mercury and lead, these things, they don't pollute the little organisms. It's actually the ones at the top that are most affected. So just be aware of that.